What's up everybody, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog and once again we're going to go on a lovely little rant regarding Harley Davidson, our favorite punching bag in the motorcycle industry. But we're going to actually go after a much larger YouTube channel for doing a rant stating that Harley Davidson is being blatantly copied by their competition Indian Motorcycle. So a certain motovlogger in a certain state that owns a certain type of dealership known as Harley Davidson goes after Indian Motorcycle because he says that they are blatantly copying Harley Davidson. Well, here's the thing. Does not Ford make an F-150 and does not Chevrolet make a Silverado and does not Dodge make a Ram because competition must have similar products to be able to have competition. Here's the thing. When it comes down to it as a dealer for Harley Davidson, for the past several years, they really haven't had any sort of direct competition. And now that they have it, they're running scared. And with the announcement of the 2020 Indian Challenger, worst name ever, I digress. Anyway, with the announcement of the 2020 Indian Challenger, Harley Davidson now has a direct competition to every single one of the bikes in its line and they can't take it anymore. Because Harley has sat still for too long, the competition has not only caught up, it has surpassed them in every way. So when it comes to the Challenger, let's take a look at some images here real fast of that, along with the Road Glide as well. And you guys be the judge. Is this a blatant copy? I rule that it is not. I see the twin little air vents that a Goldwing used to have. I see also the uh, design flare of more of a BMW with a Cyclops type look in the LEDs. I see, I see some different motorcycles in this particular machine. I don't really see too much Harley Davidson in this. It might be in the stance, but other than that, not really anything there in particular, but that's just the traditional American cruiser stance. But that's the thing. Now you have a motorcycle that comes in direct competition and direct pricing. You have the 21,699 Road Glide, you have the 21,999 Challenger. Ah, Indian's more expensive. You get 122 horsepower and 128 foot pounds of torque for 21,999 versus Harley's 119 ish foot pounds of torque and somewhere around 88 to maybe 92 horsepower out of the 114. So 108 with more horsepower or 114 with less. You get the fact that you got the reliability of liquid cooling for long-term hot operations and you can't get with air cool. You get a lot of nice little things here like power locking saddlebags, also a power windshield and other things on the Challenger you do not get on the Road Glide. And I don't really care about infotainment systems, but I will mention these because the Road Glide has the 4.3 inch screen, whereas the Indian has a seven touch screen. Now it doesn't have the navigation or anything at this particular pack, but that's the thing. It is the base model, but it still has mono block Brembo's. It still has mono shock Fox suspension in the back. It still has better bits in the long run. And there you go. For $300, you get better. You get way better. You get in what Harley would call near $12,000 better to get the accessories and the engine power and everything to match. There's not any point to buying that motorcycle if you have to put that much work into it when you can go across town and buy that motorcycle that everybody in the marketplace for baggers or motorcycles have been asking Harley Davidson for for years. We've asked for more power. We've asked for more power. When Harley Davidson gave us more power, it was only one bike length or two bike lengths faster than its twin cam. Not the Freedom 106, not the Thunderstroke 111, not the GL1800, not any of those its own twin cam because it can't compete in power and reliability and engine in general with anybody else. It can only compete with itself. And that's been the issue. So I get it. You're mad. You're frustrated. I work for Harley Davidson. I'm frustrated with Harley Davidson. I don't hate Harley Davidson. I hate the dealers. I hate how they treat people. I hate how they go about swinging an ax 
at their competition when they could let the competition fail for themselves or prove themselves. Instead, you're running scared and you have to start throwing mud. That's not the way that needs to go. When it comes down to it, I want to see successful companies. I want to see successful dealerships. I want to see successful everything because it gives people jobs. It keeps money flowing. It keeps the economy going. It keeps the world turning basically. And if you're going to be scared of competition, it's because you're not innovating enough to, to the point that you're no longer competition. And that's what's happening here. In this way, with this attack, and with so many other people trying to say things, with the fact that the live wire is failing, with the fact that Harley is still nose diving in cells, and the fact that there's nothing in the pipeline that really looks good, well, except for a blatant copy of a certain other kind of bike. We'll get into that in a moment. But that's the whole thing. That's what competition is. If you don't have something similar to offer, then it's not competition. And when American motorcycle manufacturer came out, with more American motorcycles. At first it was competing with itself and Harley. That's why they had to drop victory. And I understand that. I really wish that there could have been three design aesthetics and three different types of motorcycles and stuff like that. We've been over that before. But the whole thing is, is that for ending to compete with Harley Davidson, of course they're gonna have to make models that matter. So they started with the big touring bikes because that's what sells the most. So they had to start there. So the Chieftain came out to come out against the Street Glide. The Chiefs came out to go against the soft tails. Now, the thing is, that was a true uh, deal at the time, is it was more soft tails and not Dinas. To be honest, Indian never had an answer for the Dyna. Indian had an answer for the soft tails with the Chief line, and when the Chief line pretty much well was all dissolved except for the Dark Horse and the Vintage, and technically the Vintage is considering a touring model, they only had basically something going against uh, nothing, Harley has, because Harley changed the soft tail line completely and so no longer did the fat boy and the chief go together or the heritage and the vintage go together they they still kind of do ish those are kind of the thing but the 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 thing is is that harley's got too many redundant models in that particular area and indians thought it was better idea to just leave one model that was a bare bones cruiser and then one model that had the leather traditional bags and conventional look not the big bag or anything like that. So you can see that there's a big difference in thought process there. And I respect Polaris for doing that. I don't respect Harley for continuing to add models and redundancy to stuff they already have. And they can't, they keep claiming that they're gonna make a hundred new models, changing the paint, changing the chrome for black, changing the black back to chrome, doing all these little things does not a new motorcycle make. We keep trying to say this as the market and we keep proving it by taking our wallet and going across town, by buying a Goldwing and not a Harley, by buying an Indian and not a Harley, by buying an Eluder and not a Harley. We are speaking with our wallets. We are speaking with our minds in our own research. And we're ignoring the fact that Harley Davidson sells motorcycles because they still claim a lifestyle and we don't care. We want performance motorcycles. We've been asking for it and they've been giving us two twin or one, two, two uh, bike links of twin cam faster. Who cares? Who cares? That's the problem that we have in the market is we've got to the point of telling Harley Davidson, who cares, show us something better. And they don't. They show us a change of color. They show us a change of, of um, trim levels. They take away a key fob. Instead of giving you two, you get one now. They take away heel toe shifting. They do all these little things and they still charge you more for the motorcycle you just bought that doesn't have anything more than the motorcycle that was last year. That is the problem that Harley is dealing with and they don't get it. We don't want their stuff. And in fact, when you think about it, the FXDR, a more simple motorcycle with nothing on it whatsoever, is more expensive than the new Challenger. Harley, you gotta listen to us. The market is telling you, go down. You're, you're ignoring everything the market is saying. Indian is, in a sense, kind of doing the same thing. But what they're doing is they're taking away what's left of your brand and taking those cut and that's your customers that's all that's left of your brand is your customers and they're starting to convert you're now below 50 percent of the big cruiser market you're starting to lose 
people. You're, and Indian is gaining those that didn't go Harley because they didn't want to be part of that lifestyle. So when you have now the Challenger to the Road Glide, you have the Chieftain to the Street Glide, you have the Springfield to the Road King. You, like I said, the Chief and the Vintage really don't go against the, the Softails because they're much bigger machines, but you have the Vintage to the Heritage and the Chief to the uh, fat bo or fat boy. But then you have the FTR to nothing. And you have the Scout to the ancient Sportster. There's no comparison to your models anymore after that point. The models that Indian has are more exciting and more cost efficient than your models because when you buy one, you don't have to add tens of thousands of dollars in accessories and motor parts and all the other stuff that you do to get a Harley to be a Harley and to have some sort of performance. We want it out of the box. What part do you not understand? And we don't want to pay the exuberant price from the factory for it either. Indian has up to the 116 in many cases for only a few hundred dollars more. When you up to the 117 from a uh, Road Glide, so the Road Glide 114 to a 117 CVO is still a 10,000 to almost $14,000 hop. That is not worth it. When you put together an engine at a factory, it costs you no more in labor than it does to put the regular engine together and you're charging us for it. Not only are you doing it that way, you're charging a $40,000 price tag on a $21,000 motorcycle with a better paint job and a slightly different engine with the same tabs that fail in the wind deflectors that the $21,000 motorcycle has. You touch them twice, they break, you no longer have wind control. Doesn't matter which one you touched, you broke it. Why? Why are you not listening? Why are you not increasing quality? We're asking you to. This is what we've been doing. And then Indian's been delivering what we're asking for and that's why we're going there. Because you won't listen. And now that you're finally somewhat listening, you're copying Indian. I'm gonna have to flip the book around here. Now remember, I am a motorcycle enthusiast. I ride every brand I can. I have own to several brands. I don't really have much of a brand loyalty. I have loyalty to the wind. And whatever gets me in the wind and has the most enjoyment is the one I'm gonna go for. And right now there's nothing that Harley has that really speaks to me. And that's because they won't listen. So when it comes down to it, Harley's like, okay, we're gonna listen. We're gonna make the Street Fighter. The FTR is already out. Now, are they gonna be completely different? Possibly, but in a sense, it looks like you're copying now. Still trellis frame, all that fun stuff, guess what? Indian's there. Well, we got liquid cooling coming to engines that are 500 to 1250 cc in size. Guess what? Indian is there. With the 1130 Scouts, with the 1200 FTR, with the 999 Scout. Indian is already there with the liquid cooling. You guys are now looking like you're copying Indian. It doesn't matter, but then again, did who did Indian copy? Indian copied you know, Yamaha. Yamaha copied Harley. Harley copied this. Everybody's been copying each other because you can only do so much with plastic and steel. These are not blatant copies. If it was a blatant copy, then Harley copyright lawyers and brand management and all that would have went after Indian hardcore in court like they do the mom and pop shop that accidentally used the bar and shield one day. That's the thing. If it was really that bad, they would have went after Indian. And they can't because the design is different. But the thing is, is like, well, Harley Davidson put it out there first. No, Craig Vetter developed the uh, Liberator fairing in the 1970s that they kind of merged into as being the shark nose we know today. So it started with Craig Vetter who made Vetter fairings that was better known for the Windjammer, which was kind of a little bit of a different variant of the Batwing done by Dean Wixom in 1965. These fairings have been copied and pasted and put on many motorcycles from Harley Davidson to Honda Goldwings to everything in between. Everybody's had the shape. So I'm sorry, there's no blatant copying going on here. The blackout craze that the dark custom thing started in 2010, I'm sorry that started with Yamaha, that started with Honda, that started with all them in the past because they were blacking out things first before Harley did. The only reason Harley went dark custom was to try to reach a younger customer. 
they didn't really do a good job of it at that point. That was a decade ago. And they still aren't pulling in people because they're still not listening because what we are wanting is a motorcycle that performs, not just in a straight line. We want the one that can turn, we want one that will be comfortable, and we want one that can do everything that we ask it to do to get us to point A and point B in the best way possible, in the most exciting way possible. And quite frankly, there's nothing that Harley Davidson makes that does that. And there's where the issue is, is just they're not listening to us. And to be honest, in the longest run, I believe Matt was just frustrated with the fact that Harley isn't listening. And the only way that he could take out his anger is you can't bite the hand that feeds. If you bite the hand that feeds, you can lose your dealer license. You can lose a lot of things. You can lose, a, you can lose everything. You can lose your, you can, you can lose your life on that. You no longer have food on your table. You can be starving. And that's the whole thing. He can't attack what is what is really the problem. So he has to swing at somewhere. And that's that's been my thing. I've been frustrated like that before I've been in this industry. I was in the Harley Davidsons. And to be honest, there's a reason why I don't own Harley anymore. And it's because of the way that the dealers are. It's because when somebody walks in wanting a Sportster, they're told it's a girl's bike, they should go over here. Why are you telling them that? When they wanted a Sportster in the first place, that's what they should be getting as a Sportster. When they want a street in the first place, it's still a real Harley. It says Harley Davidson on the side. It's made and it was made in Kansas City at one point, but now it's made in Pennsylvania like the rest of them. It's still a Harley Davidson. Tell them it's a Harley Davidson. Be proud of your product. Don't sit there and just, just discount the things that are less than a Dyna at that point or less than a Softail now at this point and say that they're not real Harleys. Don't tell somebody that the most reliable Harley Davidson that was ever built with the most power and the best handling is not a Harley Davidson. I had a night rod. I had a V rod essentially, but I had a night rod. And that's the best motorcycle Harley Davidson ever built. It's the only one I still have respect for, but it's no longer in production because people walked into a dealership wanting one and they were told that it was either not a real bike or that it's not a real Harley Davidson, or if they bought it, they would be just, they wouldn't be happy because of the, the infrastructure that comes after that, after the sell. And the, the, you know, just the way that Harley Davidson owners are when somebody's not riding a big twin. It's messed up. And the whole thing is, is you've got to shake that before we come back. You've got to get to the point that riding a Harley is a privilege and an honor and an American company doing a good job of making a good motorcycle for everybody. That's what you need to get back to. Right now, the only people that can afford your bikes are lawyers that are putting these in their garages, letting them sit for seven months of the year. Then they have to come in for service because now the ethanol fuel has ate away their fuel pumps and everything else and they're not working anymore. And it makes them seem very unreliable and you get a lot of complainers and all the other things. I can keep going on and on and on and on because these people don't ride. They're not bike enthusiasts like we are. They're not a bike enthusiast like I am, and I love motorcycles. And the thing is, even though Harley doesn't have anything I like right now, they had stuff. I still have a heart for the Sportster. I still have a heart for the Fat Bob in the current Softail. I still have a heart for those, but I just don't see why I should pay their price for a motorcycle that doesn't perform as well as the things in my garage. And I know that they're saying that the Indian's going to have better, you know, suspension and all that fun stuff. The best uh, handling touring bike that there's ever been. And yet they, they forgot about my Moto Guzzi, which to me, the Flying Fort will probably still outperform it. But the whole point is people wanted performance in both speed and turning and comfort. And you guys simply haven't listened to the point that your dealers are still not, are, are now starting to take swings at the competition because they have nobody else to swing at because you're not listening and if they try they're going to get punished for it we can't have this harley davidson you create jobs for the united states and around the world polaris you create jobs for the united states and around the world act like it let's make sure we build bikes that we can all enjoy that people from all walks of life can look at and covet as they grow older and be able to afford at one point. That's the whole thing. You got to get back to what made motorcycling awesome. And that's building something for everyone. And I 
believe that with all my heart. That's why I'm going in to be a rider coach, so I can put more butts on bikes and help people get into this life I love. It's not a sport. It's a life. It's not a lifestyle. It's just life. You don't have a life until you're on two wheels. That's my firm belief. And the more people I can get on two wheels, the happier I'm going to be. So that's why I'm working toward that. So at any rate, I just had to get that out there because in this industry, it is becoming tough because there is becoming kind of a downfall in the motorcycle industry. But the thing is, is that when it comes down to it, when it comes to the consumer, it's not the consumer that chooses the bike. It's the bike that chooses the consumer. When it comes down to it, when you're out there riding, it's the bike that speaks to you and your soul and the way you ride. And if it's doing that, I don't care if it says Harley Davidson, I don't care if it says Indian, I don't care if it says Kawasaki or anything of that matter. If it spoke to you, it's your bike and you get to ride your ride. And when you find a machine that speaks to you like that, that's the one you go with because then you'll be happy for a long time to come and enjoy what we enjoy out here in the wind as enthusiasts. And that's the thing. Let the bike talk. Don't let people completely sway you away from it. Don't let people start swinging at the competition just because they're scared. Let the bike speak. Let the wind talk. And I promise you, you'll find the best bike for you. So at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below. If you want to support our channel, we actually have more ways to do that now. We have now opened a P.O. Box. We are at P.O. Box 491, Arcadia, Oklahoma, 73007. So if you're with any of the companies that are out there, then you need some product testing or anything like that, reach out to me. Uh, my email is going to be in the description as well. Uh, send me stuff to the box, and that way we can review it for you. If you got helmets or gear or anything like that, we We'd love to take that stuff out for you if you're out there with the motorcycle community. Also, if you guys are wanting to support the channel, you can send anything that you want to us. Uh, we will take license plates because I like collecting license plates from wherever I can get them. I've got a stack hiding actually up there. One of these days, it'll hopefully be on the back of the wall. So we'd love to get those. We'd love to get fan mail and art and everything like that. If you guys want to support us, you can send that to us. If you want to make donations to any of the animal rescues we're working with, Rabbit Rescue of OKC or All Paul's Rescue, send it and note it, and that way we can get that to them. We'll do direct to them and everything like that. We can get you receipts if you need to. Just send us how you want us to do it. So, like I said, check out that. We'll get that done for you. At any rate, keep that shiny side up, and we'll roll the outro. Hey, what's up everybody? Rabbit Hedgehog here, and I want to thank you for watching our videos. If you like what we do, please smash that subscribe button, hit that bell, so that way you can receive notifications when our latest videos are out. We also want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. These guys right now are out there riding with you. However, if something happens, they are not ambulance chasers. They want you to give them a call or visit their website. They're at 1-844-533-2913-247 and at lawtigers.com as well. If you're in Oklahoma and you're looking for insurance to protect your home, auto, motorcycle, or commercial, give Derek Enloe and Associates Insurance Agency a call. He's at 405-261-1010 or www.inloinsurance.com. Also, for protecting our engines, we have Doug Crawford with USA Synthetics selling AMS oil and protecting our engines. He's at www.usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. Thank you to our partners for keeping us protected and keeping our motorcycles running strong. At any rate, thanks once again for watching. Have a great day and keep that shiny side up.